What is up, guys? It's David, also known as D R C, and this Ableton update is out of this world. Ableton 11, let's go. All right, everyone, Ableton Live 11 is here in the open beta. I was able to get my hands on it, and I noticed a bunch of other producers on YouTube have as well. But instead of going over the features in an out of context situation, I'm gonna make a trap beat with you guys, showing you how to use each and every individual new feature and device to your advantage to make a trap beat. If you like this video, please be sure to like, please be sure to subscribe, make sure you comment any questions I'll answer about the beta and let me know what you think about the video. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, one of the main new features in Ableton Live 11 is the ability to do comping. Um, a lot of people use this in Pro Tools for vocal comping, getting the best takes, um, basically making a best of um, in your vocal performances, but Ableton takes it a step further and you can also do it on MIDI. So what's great about that is you can play a couple of melodies, audition each one, and then take the best portions of each individual MIDI clip and turn it into one whole melody loop. So we're gonna try that out right now. I have a simple sound just from Ableton Live stock from their wavetable device. It's called Basic Bells. So that's the sound. Um, and now I'm just gonna record a MIDI clip and I'm just gonna play a couple of four bar loops of a melody and see which one I like. Let's get into it. So you see I had a different, couple different variations. I messed up on one, but what I really enjoy about Ableton 11 is the fact that you can do this. You right click and hit show take lanes, or you can do command option U, and that's the shortcut to show all the lanes. And these are all the takes that I did. Um, so we're gonna go take a look at these. You can click this to audition this one. I turn this uh, specific take on and we're gonna hear it. So I like the first two notes on this one. So I'm gonna highlight these and hit enter. And that'll send it up to the top. See now you have an individual clip here with the first portion of this take. Now I'm gonna audition the second one. So I like those three uh, chords. So I'm gonna hit enter on that one. That'll be the second comp right there. And then you just highlight all these and you hit command J and that consolidates the MIDI. And now you got your uh, your hip hop loop. All right guys, yet another feature that I really like in the Ableton Live 11 beta is this new device called Hybrid Reverb. It's kind of a cross between their old convolution reverb that you found in the audio effects in Max for Live and algorithmic reverb. Um, it's So it's basically a cross between Valhalla and convolution reverbs. It's really cool. It's got a lot of intricate little functions in it um, that you didn't see in other Ableton reverb devices. And it's very simple to use, has a very simple user interface, but it also has a lot of options for dialing in your reverb and making some cool and interesting sounds. Uh, so how I used it on this loop that we just talked about is I added some halftime to the loop. Um, so I'll show you guys what that sounds like with the first halftime. I still felt like it was a little too bright, so I added some hybrid reverb. Now what this did was it added more of a dark, kind of in a cave tone, um, and I'll play it right now. But what's really cool about this hybrid reverb is that you can actually focus on the two sides of the reverb. You have the convolution reverb section on the left, basically any number or waveform that is in yellow, that's the convolution reverb. And anything that is in blue is the algorithm re reverb. So you have a choice to load up your own convolution reverb presets here, like plates, early reflections, real places, and then there's a couple of presets within those categories. 
or you can actually click and drag your own impulse responses into this convolution reverb so you can make your own reverbs. This is the mix knob between the convolution side and the algorithm side. The algorithm side is pretty interesting. They have prism, quartz, hall. Um, you can probably research what each of them do individually. I can probably make a whole new video just on this reverb device itself. But I just thought it was a really cool um, way to put the best of both worlds and two different types of reverbs into one simple user interface. Um, you can mess with the decay, the size, damping, shape, as well as a few other parameters that I haven't really looked into yet. But it seems very expansive. Um, there's also this left section, which is kind of like the input section. You can control how much of your original sound goes in through the reverb. And you can mess with the pre-delay. What's really cool about the pre-delay is um, you can feed it back into the reverb. So it's almost like an echo effect inside the reverb. Um, and what's also really cool is not only can it be in milliseconds, but you can change it to a time signature. So it can actually still be used as an echo, except the echo is being reverbed. So it's kind of like a combination between an echo and a reverb in that way. Another thing that's cool is you can also increase the feedback percentage. So what happens is your sound goes through the reverb, comes back out, and gets fed back into the beginning. So that reverb gets re-reverbed. Re-reverbed. I think I just coined a new term. But that reverb gets reverbed once again. So you kind of get a spacier reverb every time it gets fed through the reverb and you can control how many times it gets fed back. So not only can you make it a timed reverb, but then you can use it as like a feedback loop to create an even bigger, more expansive echo and a more bigger and expansive reverb. And that's just in these three knobs right here. These three knobs right here. That's all you need to make that complex of a reverb, which is what I really like about this device. I'm gonna turn up the feedback as this thing's playing. It's a really interesting way to make something so complex in such a simple few knobs. So I really like that about this device. But how I used it in this track is just, I just switch it to milliseconds, put it like a very small amount of milliseconds just to get a little more space uh, from the original loop, and just hit play. Made it a little bit darker. Then I added an auto filter to take away some more highs, added yet another half time. Uh, this time I, I put a little bit... Uh, less of a mix, and I auto-filtered out the bass uh, frequencies, and I EQ'd some more of the high end. So it sounds completely different than the original loop that I played for you, but it sounds like a much darker, um, a much darker loop. So have a listen. So that's what I really liked about the new devices. You can kind of add it into your workflow and get much more creative, get much darker sounds, get much brighter sounds using Shimmer or any of the algorithms, and you can actually use them in parallel, use them in series, you can blend them, you can use one, you can use the other, you can feed it back. There's so many options in that one user interface that honestly it's a pretty amazing device that comes stock now with the new Ableton Live 11. So I think that's something you should take a look at and we're gonna be moving on to the next thing that I love about Ableton Live 11. Okay, so now we're gonna be moving on to another feature that Ableton Live 11 just added to the mix and it's called MPE, MIDI Polyphonic Expression. It's something that if you have a keyboard that has this feature, you can uh, slide, add expression, add pitch bends, just by hitting a note and moving your finger. A lot of people don't have those, but you can still use this feature to your advantage by uh, mimicking something that has been in FL Studio for quite some time, and that's slide notes. Making your 808 slide up and down without having to mess with a glide feature on your simpler or any other kind of uh, odd way to do it. They actually made it a lot more elegant with this new update. So I'm gonna show you how I use it for 808 slides. Um, using the MPE uh, MIDI polyphonic expression to bend your notes to at the exact moment that you want them to bend and also at the exact key or note that you want them to bend to. So as you can see here in the MIDI clip, they have three tabs now instead of all cluttering it up in one tab, which I really appreciate. I think it's a lot better uh, way to use space. Um, they have the notes, they have the envelopes, and the last one is the note expression. So how I got the 808 slides is you click the note expressions tab and you come down here. The first button is 
a slide feature. How hip hop producers can use it is to actually dial in 808 patterns that slide up and down to give you that like pop smoke type vibe where you have these swinging and sliding 808s all over the beat. So I'm just, I just basically made a straight 808 pattern on the root C note and this is what it sounds like without the slides. And now what you can do is you go to the slide function, you click one of the notes and you see this straight line that is on each of the MIDI notes. You click where you want the slide to start and then you click another part where you want the slide to end up and you can drag it up or down and it brings it up however many semitones you want. Sometimes it's a, an octave switch up so you bring it all the way up 12 semitones. So let's hear what that sounds like. So you can control how slow or how fast you want that 808 slide to perform. So I made it uh, quite long, but I can actually shorten this more and it, and it goes in time with the beat. So have a listen. So I'm gonna move it to another note. And then also another cool thing that you can do with these notes is you have the ability to make curves like you do in any other automation. So let's say if I wanna look at this slide a little bit more uh, in depth, I can look at this um, straight line that shifts from the regular C up 12 semitones and I hold down the option button on your Mac and see how it turns into a curved mouse key. You click that line and you can drag it up or down. So you have even more control than a slide note on FL Studio. You can actually make it have an exponential creep up to the next 808 uh, pitch or much slower. So you have a lot more control and a wider variation of how you can affect your 808s in your hip hop beats. And it makes it way easier for Ableton producers to get on the same level as FL Studio trap producers, which is a very good addition to Ableton Live. And I think it's gonna be widely used in hip hop now because you can control the 808 slides to whatever note you want at whatever rhythm or timing you want in a much easier and simpler fashion. So that's your next trap tip. All right, another feature that I really liked that I ended up tweaking to make a little bit easier for trap producers to produce music is the ability to use hi-hat loops in the comping lanes. So what I ended up doing was loading up three separate hi-hat loops in one track to essentially make my own hi-hat loop, kind of like a hybrid hi-hat loop. So taking the best parts of each hi-hat loop that I thought would fit my beat better. Let's audition each one. The second loop. The third loop. So basically what I did was I clicked and dragged three hi-hat loops that I had into different track lanes. I liked this first hi-hat. So I clicked and I drew right over it and that's the section that goes to the top. Now the next section, I really liked this um, hi-hat roll. So I hit B, which is brings up the pencil tool, and I clicked and dragged over that specific hi-hat roll. Then the next part, I liked some parts from the decap, drums that knock, drum loop. So I went over to the drums that knock drum loop, and I highlighted the next two. And I just kept doing that all the way down. So now you see I created a drum loop from three other hi-hat loops and made it my own and made it different. So now once you're done with that, you take that entire drum loop, you highlight it and you hit control J and now you got a brand new drum loop. All right, so now we're gonna get to variations in hi-hat patterns using the new functions in Ableton Live 11. So what I did here is I selected three different hi-hat samples that I liked. So we just made a new session clip and I'm going to hit B to turn on the pencil tool and I'm going to draw in a note on every single quarter beat. So we're going to have them basically a giant brick wall of notes. So draw like that, that, and that. And they're all pretty different hi-hat sounds. So once we have that, if you hit play, it's going to sound like trash. It's going to be all the hi-hats playing at the same time. It's going to sound like a machine gun, basically. But using the new randomized velocity feature and the probability feature in the MIDI clips, 
you can actually get some great variations in your hi-hat patterns. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click within the MIDI window, hit Command A or Control A to select all the notes in the MIDI clip. Then I'm going to hit Randomize. That changes the velocity for all of the MIDI notes in that clip. Let's say you don't necessarily want them all to be firing at the same time because then you'll be hearing three hi-hats every time, every quarter note. So I'm going to take this probability a slider and drag it down to about 50%. And this means that you'll have a 50-50 chance that any of these notes in this MIDI clip will be triggered at that specific time. So I'm gonna hit play now and look at the big difference between the previous sound that I mentioned and this sound right here. And now see how much more random that is and um, how much more dynamic that is in the velocities as well. It really adds some uh, depth into your song and it makes it a little less um, repetitive. It makes it a little less repetitive. Another thing I did in addition to that, just to mess with the width of the hi-hat loops, I copied the original three hi-hats and then I pasted it right above the originals. And so the second instance, I went into the uh, drum rack clip and I panned it all the way to the left. So I panned these three hi-hats all the way to the left and I panned the next group all the way to the right. Now, if I go back into that MIDI clip, I draw in all the notes, make a brick wall of all of these MIDI notes triggering. I hit randomize. It randomizes the velocities of the center, left, and right hi-hat hits. And then I lower the probability to 50% when they're triggered. We have no idea when these hi-hats are going to be triggered, but it's great because it increases the stereo width of your hi-hat pattern and it adds a lot more variation. So it just it just ends up being a much more dynamic, a much more interesting hi-hat loop. So we're gonna play that now. And now we're gonna hear that in the context of the song. So you just added a lot more subtle variation to your track by widening the hi-hat loops, randomizing the velocity, and making the probability 50-50 whether or not those hi-hats are gonna be triggered in your loop. This way it makes a much more dynamic hi-hat loop and it keeps the song interesting. Okay, so making a trap beat, making a hip hop beat, you're gonna wanna have a counter melody. If you're not too up on music theory, you can basically find out what the original chords of your track was. And when you're doing a counter melody, you come over here to your MIDI clip window for your counter melody. And you click scale. And I know that this track is in C minor. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go click C and click uh, minor. There's a bunch of different types of scales. So as you can see, now all of the notes that are in C minor are highlighted in the track color, which is brown currently. Um, then there's an option to fold or to scale. And what that scale function means is it basically folds to the scale. So if you hit that, every single key that you hit on the MIDI window is gonna be in key with your track. So you'll never, you'll never hit a wrong note. This is a feature that Ableton Push had originally where you can uh, select your key and your scale and you can just play on the pads, but now it's good that you can actually draw it in, which is another feature that was in FL Studio previously, but now it's in Ableton too. So there's a lot of ways that Ableton is shining in this specific version that is bringing it on par with almost every other DAW. Um, you got the comping with Pro Tools, you got the MIDI window improvements with um, uh, that competes with FL Studio, and you have a lot of really cool, interesting, creative ways that they do it a little bit better than both of those programs. I just found out also that you can add wobbles into your tracks way easier with a new device that they put in called Chorus Ensemble. I'm gonna come out with another video showing you how you can add more dust, dirt, and wobbles to your tracks in different methods, different ways to add more control in another video coming up. So you're gonna to wanna to check that one out too. But they added yet another device to help you with that. You don't even really need RC20 or any of the other stuff for wobbles anymore because you go over to um, the Chorus Ensemble and there's a selection here. There's classic, ensemble, and vibrato. You click the vibrato portion and you lower the amount to about like 1% or less. Maybe, I mean, and anything very small amount to your taste. 
and you'll get some some uh, pitch wobbles like you would in a tape. And what I love about this is that you can change the rate, you can change the amount, you can uh, filter it out to only be on the top end of the uh, track, you can offset it, you can change the shape, you can add warmth to the track, and you can raise and lower the output. So this is a really good and useful tool that I don't think people really talked about when uh, the Ableton 11 beta came out. And I think it's something that is yet another great addition to Ableton Live 11, the ability to keep up with the times in the uh, the modern tracks and add more wobble and add more variation to your tracks in a much simpler fashion. So I think that's another great device that you guys should check out in Ableton 11. All right, guys, that's it for today. If you like this video, be sure to hit the like button below. Also, if you want to talk about any of the other audio devices that I didn't use in this trap video, like the Spectral Resonator and Spectral Time, I actually use them in the intro of this video and use them a little bit extensively. So leave a comment below if you have any questions about those audio effect plugins. If you like this video and want to see more, be sure to check out the rest of my channel and I'll link you to another video right here. This is DRC signing out and reminding you, keep doing what you love. I'm out.